Headwaters is a community foundation in Minnesota, and what we do is we support community organizing throughout the state, and our strategy is really funding people and organizations that are closest to the problem because we think that they're also closest to solutions. The other thing that we do that I think helps us be really successful is instead of a traditional board of directors making decisions, we have a group of community organizers that are very connected to the work that make all of the decisions about our grant making. Um, and because they're so close to the issues, they really choose the right groups at the right time. Headwaters has been using social media to um, really strengthen our connection with our constituents, so our donors and the grassroots groups that we're supporting. And I think that social media can help you um, develop a stronger connection with people, even if you aren't seeing each other in person. We really get the organization's personality and brand out there, and it helps people feel connected to something larger than themselves. I think we've gotten a really positive response from older nonprofit leaders. Many of them have told me I wish it existed when I started out in my career. It would have um, stopped a lot of headaches that happen as you're trying to navigate and figure out your way. Um, and we've had a lot of people that have bought it for their mentees, which I think is a really great way to strengthen that relationship. I think the leadership gap was a little bit hyped up to start out with because I think there were people ready to take on leadership, but they look different than what we expect a leader to look like. Um, but I think it has slowed down the transition quite a bit. There's a lot of people that want to retire and they can't because their 401k is gone. Um, the interesting thing that's happened though, because we're having this leadership crunch in organizations, baby boomers and greatest generation folks that are unable to retire also don't want to lose great Gen X and Gen Y staff members that they have and so they're starting to share leadership in a new way and I think that's something that can only be good for our field. I think the biggest challenge is getting hired onto an organization. You have to make the case to the board and to the decision makers that you're ready for leadership. Um, and that you're the right person for the job. Once you're in the position, I think you have the exact same challenges that any executive director does. You have to make sure that you're staying on budget, that you're staying on mission, and that you're doing the best possible job with the resources that you have. So I don't think that's different based on age, but that first hurdle is a pretty high one. I think experience isn't correlated with age at all, and too often people think that those two things are exactly the same. If young people are getting that advice that they're not experienced enough, I think the first thing to figure out is, is somebody saying that you're too young? And if so, ignore that. Um, but if you really are not experienced enough, that's a definite possibility as well. A lot of people say, I'll learn how to be a leader when I'm managing people, or I'll learn those skills once I'm in the position. And you're never going to get into that position if you don't develop those skills. So I think anything that you can do to really push those stereotypes and say, here's the great experience that I have, here's the expertise that I built, even if I wasn't managing people, um, I took on stretch assignments where I could manage people and resources and move something forward. That's what hiring committees are looking for when they're finding staff members. So it doesn't have to be about age, but you're the one that's going to have to make that case.